Hi, everybody, and welcome to a new episode of the Elseworlds Exchange here on Comic Pop Returns. I am Sal. And I'm Joel. If you uh, like this channel at all, you can subscribe to it and click uh, the like button on this video. It helps us out a little bit, so feel free to do so. Otherwise, you can sponsor today's show by using Super Chats, ask a question or comment here on the show, and we'll read it here on the air. Like this fine gentleman right here who says, uh, it's Hogshead. Uh, Marvel sent everyone, DC, you get nothing! <laughs> uh, I guess that I, <laughs> that seems like the, the prevailing opinion. We're talking yeah. today about the Warner Brothers Discovery mm -hmm. quagmire. We had a whole other show planned and then everything happened all at once. <laughs> yes. And it's very interesting. I, I think that it's apt. Uh, you know, we're calling this just like, what's happening? Because yeah. uh, th there is there's a there was a lot of information before the investors call that Warner Brothers Discovery had. Yep. Uh, and uh, and then there was a lot of conjecture slash confirmation. Mm -hmm. So I thought what we would do is we would talk about what we heard, what we know what are rumors Indeed. and what we think yes it's funny you know i i can remember when uh what is it when the whole discovery deal went through you and i were talking about i, I think we were doing a live show just like this and yeah. someone said hey guys what do you think that means and as we always say in that situation well you never can tell when there's a big acquisition nothing ever happens all at once talk to us again in like a year and some change and when it does happen it all happens very quickly likewise when the at&t thing happened we're like yeah we won't know anytime soon but when we do know we'll tell you yes i remember that when at&t acquired warner brothers uh that was there was like an antitrust lawsuit yes. and there was some conjecture concern about what was going to happen to DC comics. Mm -hmm. I heard similar rumblings after this, uh, this, this Batgirl cancellation where people were yeah. like, maybe they're going to cancel. Like maybe they're going to sell DC comics. Um, I heard an interesting rumor. So, okay, let's talk about what we know. What happened sure. yes, that triggered this whole thing is that the Leslie Jones uh, led Batgirl film, which had a $90 million budget, which was yep. made exclusively to come out on HBO Max, which I believe was more or less a creation from the at t merger. Like, that was an attempt to break into streaming. the streaming wars, right? Yes, to break they, into the streaming market. Yes, they wanted something exclusive for their app. They wanted it to be the vanguard of a new streamable DC universe. It was going to be that. It was going to be Blue Beetle, which they kept going back and forth whether or not Blue Beetle was going to theaters, but it wasn't going to theaters, but maybe mm -hmm. they were going to... COVID clearly messed that up, and then they had no idea what they were doing. Exactly. Uh, but uh, but Batgirl had been intended to be uh, a DC-exclusive HBO Max movie. Yes. Uh, and HBO Max, of course, is no stranger to releasing like large-budget films, because during COVID, they had almost no choice, and so... All they, ended they up could do. Doing that, they released the Mortal Kombat movie, they released yep. Godzilla vs. Kong, uh, Wonder Woman 2, mm -hmm. uh, and, and uh, to, to middling results. I think, ultimately, they probably all lost money. I think all of those probably hurt uh, their bottom line. And again, their ultimately. model was a little different than the Disney model, where Disney's like, give, a, give us money up front, and then you can have it, and then two weeks we'll put it out, but give us money now. Exactly, which they did get to keep at least the lion's share of that uh, that model allowed them to, because of course, when uh, movies are released in theaters, uh, distributors only get like a, they get a smaller percentage than uh, they would if they released it on their own streaming platform. Yeah, and um, movie theaters only make money on concessions. Exactly. Uh, but yeah, so uh, Batgirl was developed as an HBO Max exclusive show. It was part of some kind of universe. Whatever the fuck the DC multiverse is now. Keaton was going to be in it as Batman, even though we haven't had the Flashpoint movie to set that up yet. J.K. Simmons was going to be back Gordon. as Gordon, even though we have another Gordon in the Batman now. It was a whole, whole friggin' thing. Well, after the success, I think, of Joker, when Joker made a billion dollars, mm. when Wonder Woman, Batman, and Superman all didn't, yeah, they went, all right. Continuity doesn't up. matter. None of it matters. Continuity they don't. They don't care. Like the audience doesn't care. Just make whatever. You know. And a lot of the times, of Ray, it does, yeah, Peacemaker did Peacemaker great. Succeeded. Yeah. Which which was arguably more connected than any of the other ones when you really break it down. Absolutely. Uh, so they 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 had the multiverse approach. Yes. Initially, and uh, I think that the idea was that when the Flash movie was supposed to come out. It mm -hmm. was going to set up a new continuity or some kind of hodgepodge continuity, quo, yes. new status quo, and Batgirl was going to be like 
the first. And it was following a similar model to the Disney plus Marvel Cinematic Universe model, which is, you know, start out with movies, create the streaming service, mm. which, you know, was not necessarily part of the original MCU plan. But yeah. now that we have it, develop properties for Disney plus directly that are still part of the Marvel Cinematic mm. Universe that will dovetail or at least contribute to cinematic releases. The whole, right. it all happened. It all is part of it. And uh, I, I think that at t was following suit. They're like, yeah, yeah, no, Flash will come out in theaters. Us too. Batgirl will also come out on on HBO Max, and it'll all be part of this whole, like, homogenous, like, monster, amorphous Patch blob. work, yeah. Of, of content that you'll, just, the... that you'll just absorb. Oh, I, uh, I was also reminded, too, there, I guess Keaton was supposed to have a role in that Aquaman movie, but that tested weird with Joe and Jane Popcorn. Like, I don't understand what this is because you're referencing one movie that didn't come out yet and one that got shelled. So apparently they're going back and Affleck is dusting off the costume one more time. for Yes, this. Affleck is going to be Batman or Bruce Wayne or both in the Aquaman 2 movie, which is, of course, part of the dceu which whatever it's supposed to, to be post flashpoint but we don't know until next summer because right. they postponed the movie for that long if it even comes out assuming if ezra miller doesn't hurt themselves or someone else in that time as they drive across america running from the fbi no that's not a joke that's actually happening <laughs> precisely uh, in fact we in, in the wake of the cancellation of the background movie uh producer barbara muschetti yeah. of the flash mm-hmm said quote all is good in flashland as if Lady. As, as if to confirm like no listen like this flash movie is happening and the implications of this movie are long reaching and intensive like we're going to this is this is the linchpin for us we sunk 300 million dollars <laughs> into this thing it's the linchpin of our whole new universe and you said we got to ride or die with this dangerous yeah. criminal <laughs> we, we 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 can't tax write off this movie yes as much as we probably morally should at this point right so uh batgirl all we knew before the investors meeting was batgirl was canceled and there was some conflicting reports about why right they said uh batgirl was canceled we'd heard things like uh it tested really poorly with audiences which i'm like why would that suddenly stop you? Yeah, you've uh, had but, lots of tariffs. I heard conflicting things, too, because I heard like a while ago that it was testing good and people yeah. loved Brendan Fraser's side yeah. plot. And it was a whole thing. People were really excited about uh, Barbara's roommate, who they brought back in the Pride special and everything and actually gave a costume and everything. That was a big deal. Absolutely. They were really excited about getting behind like an actual real strong trans character and everything. Mm -hmm. But then just a couple days, it's like, actually, we say it tests bad now. Yeah, actually, it tested bad. We also heard that they were using it as a tax write-off, uh, that $90 million, uh, if we never release it anywhere, will actually be able to, because that was money spent by a previous administration, a yes. previous studio, Discovery now, uh, you know, kind of making their decisions and, and, and I think really setting up the fact they had an investors meeting and had to have some kind of plan. Yes, uh, you know, create get their story straight and said, tighten the belt. <laughs> yeah, we need to tighten our belts. We need to, we need, we need to apply some semblance of tax credits to our initiative, which is going to cost hundreds of millions of dollars, <laughs> if not billions of dollars. It's hilarious because uh, who's the guy in charge of you know, David Zaslov? Is that yes. how you pronounce it? I he assume. Yeah, we have this meeting where it's like, we got to tighten our belt. You know, we got a bunch of stuff that we can cut and we're going to get lean. But also we're going to spend more money than the last because we're going to spend more money than ever before. Well, how the hell does that make sense? How do you tighten your belt and say you're going to spend more at the same time, David? That's, that's very much what uh, what the what the very the super rich think of when they think of tightening their bootstraps is also mm -hmm. spending. You got to spend money to make money. But like, <laughs> yeah. so so Batgirl gets shelved forever, mm -hmm. indefinitely. And for a number of conflicting reasons, it's bad. It is going to be a tax write-off um, we don't believe, don't believe in the project in anymore and the other thing that i believe was very much at least said in honesty was a statement where they're like we're not interested in producing and this is paraphrasing of course uh the mid-budget action blockbuster mm. like we're only interested in big budget theatrical go to releases, theaters yeah yes that will result in big rewards you can't make a $90 million direct-to-streaming movie mm -hmm. and expect that to 
make a billion dollars to make a billion dollars and to start to like throw your weight around in the box office that, <laughs> to, that i think that was their approach to which again if i was in the room i'd be like but you're not making billion dollar superhero movies anyway right, so you still haven't done that except for joker and even then like that's you can't that was do that a, every time that was a weird ass fluke and also you're doing a musical sequel with lady gaga next even like the two edgy joker people and the pretentious film bros aren't gonna like that because you're making a goddamn modern day musical right west side's story cost like what like 500 million dollars yeah. it made like 20 bucks and that was made by spielberg for god's sake what, what makes you think we're really gonna go see this who knows and i, and I, I like I'm, musicals for the record me too, don't get me wrong i'm a big fan i would love if more comic book movies were weird avant-garde musicals well didn't we hear isn't there uh gonna be in guardians or or one of the movies like there's gonna be they land oh it's captain marvel it's the marvels oh they're yeah. gonna they're gonna land on a musical planet that's pretty fun all right I'm which i believe is actually from uh the captain marvel run but anyway that sounds uh, very fun i don't want to get off track but like all we heard was scoob and batgirl were canceled and like it's all part of the plan yeah, not only were they canceled, but they were canceled at the finish and line. They were like 90% done, 90 and they plus, like killed them. Like 99% done. Like, Scoop was done. Money was spent. Hundreds of million, or at least a $100 million is spent on both properties. That's and so fucking sad if you, like, know what goes into animation, the sleepless God. nights, and these people working their fingers to the bone. are like, yeah, we're not going to release it. Yeah, and by the way, having seen uh, Prey, the new upcoming mm -hmm. Hulu released uh, Predator sequel, which, by the way, is amazing. Go see so it. So I hear. Uh, I saw it in theaters, and it's going to be released on Hulu, and it's actually a kind of similar situation because Disney inherited Prey mm. when it was developed by Fox Studios. Yes, that's right. And they didn't know what to do with it, so they just dropped it on Hulu. But at least they dropped it. Yes, they could have taken a, a, a you know an eighty to ninety million dollar tax write off and, and never said got it. that movie is never coming out and would have made eight of us really sad. But when uh, similarly I saw to that, Free Guy, which they Free almost Guy. didn't release for the same reason, but they did it anyway because like oh well, we kind of want to keep Ryan Reynolds sweet and this director yeah. sweet because we might want them to do Deadpool three for us and also hey we can we can change a couple scenes in here and put some more Marvel Avengers stuff in here if we want to make it feel more like our own exactly. Uh, but uh, but they could have shelved it indefinitely and instead they uh, are dropping on Hulu. But when I went to that premiere, the cast, the crew the director they were all there and you could feel their like lamentation that mm. this is probably the only time they're gonna see an audience watch this movie oh that's a bummer in a theater and it does it plays great in theaters it does look good um but the reason these folks make these things in the first place is to see them come out yeah yeah that's yeah that's the whole point of being an artist and creating art and everything exactly. to share it with the world and get to be there and see people's reactions and feed on that energy mm -hmm. so uh sadly the people who created batgirl and scoob and more projects that were also quietly canceled or taken off of hbo max will never see the fruits of their labors yes they took off a bunch of original movies that again were done and were up and you could watch they got rid of an american pickle which is probably like the best seth rogan thing he's done in a very long time one of the first things they put out yeah, during the that. pandemic when it started that bums the shit out of me everyone search out an american pickle because it's actually really good <laughs> well good luck finding it maybe you can ahoy go look for it on the internet webs yeah. but uh yeah, I so so that was where it started. Was this like rampant speculation and 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 concern? As I understand it, the people who made Batgirl, including the star, uh, found out about it through social Twitter. media, like the rest of us. That just came and, out today. They had no idea. Didn't tell them. They just canceled it. Yeah, just sprung yeah. it on them. And they're handling it, by the way, with such grace and dignity. I gotta tell you, like sure. it's actually really impressive. Uh, uh, Leslie herself like made like a kind of Instagram video where mm. she was like taking like taking off the costume and singing a song and I'm like this is this is like really classy Very. how these people are kind of like mourning the loss of this project that spent months and millions of dollars and hard earned work uh, to come out so that those movies are dead and gone and we'll never see them but probably will one day because, unless listen, someone ends up leaking them surprisingly. We got Deadpool because somebody leaked that teaser. Somebody. I feel like one day we're going to see Batgirl. Batgirl will will one day come out, but it'll be far too late for it to matter. Uh, <laughs> Coming to a swap meet trunk near you. Right? It'll be like the Star Wars holiday special. Hey, yeah. the Batgirl movie. Um, but yeah, so that's what we heard. That's what started the fire that made everybody freak out. And then it got worse. And then it got worse. 
Now, wh- where do you want to start with this? Because you want to do want you want to talk about the investors meeting. I mean, I guess we might as well. Yeah. So they had this investors call. Uh, the new head of uh, well, the, the head of Discovery slash the head of now like Warner Brothers and like the DC Films, uh, basically gave outlined his his big genius plan. Yes, which for, for those who don't know, uh, David Zaslav comes to us from the world of reality television. He's the man who made Honey Boo Boo Child and Mama June the big stars that they are. That is his claim to fame, which should tell you where he comes creatively. Oh. So we have a look at uh, what he shared during this investor's mm-hmm. uh, second quarter earnings call. Talked about the brands that matter. Mm-hmm. That includes HBO, Discovery, CNN, HGTV, Cartoon Network, DC, and Looney Tunes. The franchises that they're very proud of. These are the franchises they yeah. like. basically are going to pin all of their hopes and dreams on. Now, interestingly enough, DC is a brand. Yes. And now, according to one of their things, they said it was a studio. So DC Studios is now a thing. Okay. Like the like Marvel Studios. Yeah, so, yeah, well, again, they, uh, we'll get to it eventually, but they have a plan that basically says, we're just going to look at Marvel's notes and do what right, they're doing. Which, which I think people have been suggesting they do forever. Um, but There's I don't no think, shame in it. I don't think that they're necessarily cribbing Marvel's notes. I think they're cribbing, like, I think they're doing, like, their own, they're, they're copying their homework and then erasing it and writing their uh, own answers. But uh, if you look at their franchises, like DC is a brand and a studio, but also the franchises that they think are as big or as important as Harry Potter and Game of Thrones are Batman, Wonder Woman, and Superman. Did you notice, too, the logos they used are the old logos, not the new logos we've been using for a number of years? These are their these are the logos they've had. No, those are the Warner Brothers logos for Mm. those characters. Mm. Yeah, absolutely. These are the logos that they got like vectors for in 1989. Not the new movie ones, not the updated comic ones. These are the old ones, which tells me you did a very small amount of research when you put this together. Oh, yeah. Well, they just, no, just get me the logos that we have on file. Uh, Also, Shark Week is apparently a big deal. And 90 Day Fiance. 90 Day Fiance, man. That's the other Marvel Cinematic Universe there, 90 Day <laughs> Fiance, because you got 90 Day Fiance, then you got Pillow Talk, then you got all the other spinoff shows from it, plus, you know, the drama video ecosystem, you know, oh, what did Big Ed do this week? Naturally. I also heard uh, there was also rumors before this came out that uh, there was like a 70% of the HBO Max staff was being laid off. Yes. The HBO Max itself was on the chopping block. Scripted they don't... content. They were. Ju- I, I I think they canceled Hacks too when I wasn't looking. Yes, which... Hacks was canceled. Yeah. Fuck you. That was a great show and it left on a cliffhanger. I hate you guys so much. <laughs> I know. I know. Um, so we, we heard that there might be a cancellation of HBO Max and have it kind of like like drifted over to discovery plus i guess because it's like well i had a hand in that honestly like if you want to understand this industry a little better you have to understand the egos involved and what these folks are willing to like the if if i didn't make it then i don't value it yeah which is like, true of almost every acquisition we see that happening. One hundred percent. Heads rolling. We see massive, you know, shakeups and you know presidencies and VPs and chairmen and everything. Yeah. So you look at uh, them looking at HBO Max and going, "Well, Discovery Plus is what I worked on and what I developed, so yeah. maybe we'll drift it over there." Now that being said, they're not gonna do that. They're not canceling HBO Max. That's something that did, did come yeah, out. They're fusing them, but only in the international market because here's another thing that i think got lost in the noise hbo max is only in the states it's not in britain it's not in canada it's not in australia it never came out so technically my country never got hbo max as it was we'll only be getting this weird discovery hbo fusion thing maybe absolutely so the way they looked at it they were like okay so HBO Max and Discovery Plus actually handle two different demographics and will handle Mm. two separate uh, types of content. HBO Max will handle the male audience. Which is fucking staggering the graphic they used for this. You could tell an old, out-of-touch person made this. (laughs) Absolutely. No, no, no. Uh, Male skew, scripted, appointment viewing, and home of fandoms. That's what that's gonna be that's the word they use so hey ladies uh david zaslov and discovery plus don't think you're fans of anything so all you know fan artists and fan fiction writers out there i know who are predominantly women well you don't exist to them yeah uh but don't worry yet you do exist in discovery plus because that's gonna be the female skew 
unscripted comfort viewing home of genderdom or g- genre dums. Genre. I thought it was ge- everyone was saying gender dom online. Was everyone yeah. just reading it wrong? Yeah, no, it's genre dums. Okay. That's- that's going to be where the 90 day fiance is your honey boo boos, your HGTVs, your flea market flips, your all your property all brothers. Kind of yes. And they also coined phrases that I've never heard of in my life, but 100% believe are have been bandied about for at least the last 15 years. Uh, HBO Max is going to have more lean in content. Oh, yeah. Discovery Plus is going to have more lean back. I fucking hate those. So just a just a reaction. Something flipped in my brain. Where it's yeah. like, really? That's what you think of art, and that's what you think of cinema. Where it's like, oh, you either lean forward like you're really into it, or oh, you lean back and check your email because you don't really care and everything. That's right. That well, is that is so <sighs> fucked. I agree. I agree. Lean in content is like, oh, you're on the edge of your seat. Mm. Lean back content is like, ah, I'm gonna throw on a couple of guys building a house. And I'm gonna lean back. I'm gonna put my bonbons on my on my tummy. Mm-hmm. And I'm just gonna pop them and, and and watch TikTok while it's happening. Yeah, made up uh, bullshit that is very believable and very Hollywood. But that's so that that is the plan. Is that they're gonna keep HBO Max and and thank God by the way because mm-hmm. HBO Max is quickly becoming a lot of people's favorite streaming service. Not mine, but I do appreciate it. In fact, I watched more HBO Max over the last like week than I had in the first year. Mm. And. Uh, it was actually like kind of convenient for me. I was like, oh, you know what? I want to watch Rick and Morty. Oh, it's right there. I want to watch Venture Brothers. It's right there. I want to watch they like, made any, a Harley lot Quinn. of strides is yeah. the thing. And like, I remember even reading a report before all this news broke where it's like, oh, for the first time ever, HBO Max and Amazon Prime with their new shows and new strategies have actually gained ground on Netflix for the first time ever. Yeah. Because Netflix is fucking up with, shit terrib- in bed. Yeah, exactly. with terrible choices. We're going to charge you more money. We might do ads. We're cracking down on password sharing. Oh, no, our opponents are gaining ground on us now. <laughs> how, how did we lose a lead this large? Exactly. Uh, so according to their global product, which is another horrible way to describe it, they say yep. uh, single global brand. So they are going to they're, they're going to merge them probably in terms of like what they mm. call them. Yeah. Uh, customer experience and quality first. Oh, sure. Common tech, best of both platforms. So I, I hopefully mean uh, hopefully that means that they're going to like synergistically make both apps like work the same. Yeah. Uh, efficient, scalable, and resilient, scalable partner integrations and modular capabilities like on-demand and live, ad-free, ad-light, and ad-only options, multi-tier uh, sports and transactional. So we're doing uh, a Hulu content. thing now, and we're chopping up sports and news because for some reason they always chop up sports and news. Love to do that. Um, by the way, I love their description of their uh, what what they have as iconic series and characters mm-hmm. because DC isn't on there, but Friends, Fixer Upper, The Big Bang Theory, Big Property Bang. Brothers, Triple D, Dinos, Drivings, and Dives, and Guy Theory. And I I love this because Friends is over and they're not making any more Friends. Nope. The Big Bang Theory is over and they're not making more Big Bang Theory. Sex in the City is over and one of them stopped doing it and they're yeah. too old to keep making these so that's over mm-hmm. too so out of your six iconic series and characters 50% of them are basically dead brands yep. outside of syndication pretty much and even some of the other stuff they're betting on where it's like oh Game of Thrones and Harry Potter I'm like uh, I don't know if you guys have been paying attention <laughs> but yeah but Game of Thrones is effing like toxic and dead yeah. according to its own fandoms and yeah. harry One potter bad. you can't even make a good harry potter movie that doesn't star harry potter and that's even before you consider what the writer has been up to who has way much you know what this is this is a contractual thing is what this is it's like well we made house of the dragon and we gotta fucking promote it because it's the next thing coming out so you better get hyped for it right now and god damn it we signed a 10-year deal with goddamn rolling and she's deciding to make herself the new orson scott card so we're kind of fucked so yeah no it's true so uh that that's that is their uh that's their approach uh and it's fascinating because like that is because at the end of the day, when you look at this stuff and you hear about what they've described, we're going to get into the DC stuff. Cause I, yeah. I think that's like, it, it warrants its whole, a whole other thing. Oh, we're going to get super chats before we do that. But, uh, but, but you need this context you need for, this context what for like, what need. we're looking at. These are the people we're dealing with. These are the choices they're making. Yeah. No wonder we're a little, you know, concerned. Yeah. But I should also mention that nothing has actually been said. No. About what they're doing. Like this is all smoke and mirrors. It's all a uh, a breakdown of what we already knew, mm-hmm. which is that Discovery and HBO slash Warner Brothers 
considered these their top brands. Yep. The only thing that I actually learned from this is that they actually consider Superman a franchise and a viable option. Which isn't that nice. Yeah, that's kind of cool that they like that and they want to get back to it. So that's nice. But outside of that, like Shark Week, Game of Thrones, and Harry Potter being their biggest franchise, yeah, that's why, like, yeah, I knew that already. Uh, the fact that they consider, like, their international brands to have all these, yeah, okay, these are all things we knew already. And because we know that Discovery is in charge of their creative arm, they're going to have... A, a conflict of interest with two competing streaming services. Yep. Yeah. They're going to have to reconcile those two halves. And these are all things that I don't necessarily begrudge them. It's just more like we know it. Yeah. And like, it makes your app more appealing too. When Disney absorbed Fox, that actually ended up working well for them. I'm surprised every time I turn on the Canadian one, it's like, Ooh, they got a reservation dog. Now, Ooh, they got the bear. Ooh, they got what we do yeah. in the shadows. That's fun. Oh yeah. No. And, and uh, the only reason why like Hulu hasn't been 100% integrated into Disney plus is because Comcast owns a portion of, Disney, mm. of, of Hulu. So like if, and when Comcast ever gives up the ghost, then, you'll see a, more, a much more robust Disney Plus in the States. And get my King of the Hill in there, too, because for some reason Hulu has that one all tied up. And they also right? have, I think, the old Beavis and Butthead all tied up as well. Mm. I assume that was Paramount Plus, but maybe. I don't, I don't know. But Paramount uh, Plus has some weird things. Like with South Park, they can't show you the old South Parks. They can only show you the new South Park movies that they paid for as part of a deal, which – Matt and Trey even make fun of in the new special where it's like, how did we end up making two shows for two different streaming apps right now? Well, because they paid you a billion dollars, guys. A I'm not going to feel too bad. Dollars. They paid them something ridiculous. And in their new special, they basically tell Paramount to fuck off that they feel overworked. And it's like, guys, they you made like a billion dollars. I'm not yeah. going to feel bad. This is why I don't watch South Park anymore because you're billionaires complaining. You have to do more work because you took the money. Yeah, you took the money. And it, by the way, and good for you because that was so, there's so much money. Yeah, I get it. Uh, so let's jump into a couple of super chats before we move on to the DC news slash DC speculation. That's yes. really what it is. It's it's all rampant speculation. Uh, Cully, uh, yeah, Cully Diggs, Batgirl really should have been in Birds of Prey. Yeah, mm. I think that's fair. I mean, like that movie already had everybody else in it. Uh, Kevin Myers, a 10 year plan is good and I would prefer a single coherent DC universe, but this whole thing is so disrespectful to Batgirl cast and crew. Much love to you both. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, yeah. yeah, I agree that it was disrespectful. I can imagine that it's one of those things that they like, if they care, if, if we're dealing with human beings, mm -hmm. they did think this is the only way we can like recruit loss and dedicate million, tens of millions of dollars to new projects mm -hmm. while also like it's the only way to do it that we can see. And it's a shame. It's regrettable. But this is the only way to do it. That being said, they should have sent they, they should have sent a, a word yeah. officially to everyone involved uh there should have been some kind of like farewell like package or or some mm -hmm. kind of like uh, i think the industry calls it hush money yeah we'll get Make you on the back end it. yeah take the money and don't complain about it there's also just this inescapable air of like well there's a new sheriff in town now and right. things are gonna change i made an example out of scoob and batgirl none of you are safe <laughs> that's right that's right uh, so yeah, but I, I do, I, I'm, I'm similarly optimistic, but maybe not about where they're going, but also it's, it is a damn shame for everyone involved for losing their movies. And, and the, uh, and the, like the PR side of it is bad too. You know, they're oh, sending yeah. a terrible the message. Oh yeah. The optics are terrible. It's like, yeah, we took this movie with this hot up and coming young actress and these two really diverse directors who just had great success working for our competition on Miss Marvel <laughs> and we <laughs> killed it dead. Also, too, this extends to the boardroom, too. From what I understand, HBO actually had a fairly, for Hollywood at least, diverse group of, like, chair people and vice presidents and everything. Zaslav got rid of all of them and hired a bunch of his old white men friends from everything else he's been doing. Well, it's very indicative based on the language and the yeah. like, approaches to this whole thing because we'll get into, like, what they what they want to see with uh, mm -hmm. DC. Mm -hmm. But uh, Cowboy says, I hope the focus stays in Barbara and not the Birds of Prey and her potential replacement focusing on barbara's roommates could be interesting mm. i have no idea what you mean because neither of those movies are ever coming out you're not getting the birds of prey too and you're not getting a batgirl movie yeah now uh, nothing is safe <laughs> yeah uh dex baker can't watch live but just wanted to say thanks for the content uh see you on the rewatch thanks a lot dex really appreciate you and uh thanks for stopping by uh, we will see you on the rewatch uh awkward mexican says uh, glad to see my favorite dynamic comic book podcasting oh. duo back together still at work catch you on the watch later playlist thank you very much mexican uh awkward you, though you may be we really appreciate <laughs> it man and uh lucky to, lucky to have joel back uh starro pulsaro how do you think this will affect young justice 
Joel, you watch Jung Justice. Yes. Uh, I will say this might be a good indication. So here's here's what we do know in the wake of all of this. James Gunn himself was tweeted at and said, what does this mean for Peacemaker 2, yeah. season 2? And he said, we're safe, calm down. He, that was his he, reaction. He so if Peacemaker is a success and, it, and James Gunn, who is leaving Marvel after Guardians 3 yeah. and presumably will be joining DC for the foreseeable future, suggests to me that successful projects or projects that will be deemed successes for HBO Max and their lean-in content yeah. uh, are safe. I think Young Justice may be okay depending on how the numbers are. Well, they also said they plan to cut back on animation was another thing they said, which you know really worries me because it's like, oh, this show, they've already cut the funding so hard on this one and they already canceled it once. I can totally see the powers that be being like, why are we keeping this thing around then if it costs oh, yeah. so much money and we don't sell merch and anything? Who Who is this even for? anymore i could totally see them killing it dead i really could if they do that'll break my heart it'll really hurt my channel and my bottom line <laughs> but the last season actually ended on a really good note they married connor and megan off and it all came full circle from the first episode so like i i will be sad but i will understand it and at least i can say the show went out on a good uh good note yeah yeah i i i'm i think that young justice is one of those shows where it's like it's lucky to have gotten what it's in the had. first place yeah it was uh, the amazing you know confluence of events that even got it resurrected to begin with i do think that shows that were in development but haven't been produced are also effed like batman the cape crusader oh and that that's superman dead. show that scares me that's very sad i really was looking forward to those this is speculation we don't have any confirmation but i don't expect them to develop those properties batman might be safe just because he's batman because and batman young and justice batman might be safe if they like go can you put more batman in it yeah. uh sean d says uh, uh don't see you guys as often when you're live so hi well hello to you Sean. good to hi. see you again thanks for stopping in uh kali diggs also i hope you're coming to baltimore comic-con this year big fan hope you'll do a hellboy comic on back issues one day i could see that happening someday uh certainly i'll be at baltimore so if you are coming to baltimore uh, see us there. Also, if you want to go to ZapCon in Wayne, New Jersey on September 10th, uh, at least two of us will be there. And we're going to have a panel at 11.35 a.m. Uh, it's Ooh. all one day. Come check it out. Uh, Dante Cook, not releasing the Batgirl movie is ridiculously sad. DC could have had a leg up on the MCU in the female hero slash inclusion race. Ooh. Hashtag release the Batgirl movie. Um, I don't know how lucrative that race is. And as Joel and I have described it, you know, this is a this is a group of people who perceive women and men to have separate interests to the point where they have separate streaming services dedicated to yeah. them. I don't think that they value that race. No, not, and, not uh, at all. And, and I, I do think it's a shame because I hate when any art that is produced can't come out. Like I, I'm a big fan of the Roger Corman Fantastic Four movie. I recognize mm. it's terrible, but I also think it's a really neat, interesting uh, product of its time, and it's a shame because you, we do know the effect this has on the talent who were not aware of it being a scheme yeah. to uh, <laughs> own the rights of the movie uh, and then make a real one later. I, I think they had all intentions of making this background movie until the new management said we can use this as a way of like you know saving money. Um, it is it is a shame though. It is a damn shame. It uh, uh, It is funny. You know, he put a hashtag at the end of that. Isn't it interesting that all the other DC release movie hashtags were surprisingly radio silent on this one? I, I wonder I wonder what the difference is. You know, I'm I just couldn't asking imagine. questions. Not to mention the fact that it's set in their precious DCEU since J.K. Simmons is Gordon in that movie. Yeah. Uh, the derpiest of derps. I'm very worried about the Trinity, that the Trinity is the only DC characters properly acknowledged, even if it is just the Justice League or Teen Titans were thrown on there. I'd be able to breathe a little easier. Yeah, I, well, the thing is, I don't think that they understand that those are separate brands. And I think for them, it's a catch-all. I, I, yeah. I genuinely think these guys approach the Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman franchises 
as being like catch-alls. Right. I mean, I get the fear though, this idea where it's like, look, anything that isn't going to make a billion dollars open huge, anything that hasn't been around for 80 years can kick rocks. We're not going to make a Green Arrow movie. Or a Justice League Dark movie. Yeah, we we made a Green Lantern movie and it arguably fucked up everything so badly. (laughs) Right, like that was our cinematic universe and it completely crapped the bed. It's also why I have a hard time believing. It's like, we have a 10-year cinematic plan for this. Yeah, the last three guys said that, and then you know what happened? They got bought. Yeah, no. it. You can't say you have a 10-year plan when you don't have an executive in charge of that plan. Yeah, when you don't know if you're going to be here. Exactly. Sean D., any chance Vinnie Mac becomes CEO of DC? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's free now. I mean, he's he's going to need something to do. I feel he's a real Charles Schultz type, where if he doesn't have a job every day, he might die. So, yeah, why right. not? <laughs> Uh, Supreme Omega on Batgirl. It's sadly fitting that Warner Brothers would rather promote a Flash film starring an actual criminal on the run. Yeah. I repeat, an actual criminal on the run. Yeah. I, I, I think it's just that it costs too much. Yeah, like, that's that's money. That's the dirty business of Hollywood. The weird thing we- is, Batgirl, was, Batgirl and Flash were both funded by the same previous studio. Yep. So it's like, it's still not your money that was spent. <laughs> Why are, but like, you know, if Flash is precious enough to be the template from which you will spring your cinematic universe, make another Flash movie. Yeah. Let's make another one. Now, I, I'm not in the business of telling multimedia studios that they should take their $250 million movie, <laughs> throw it away, and then spend mm. another $250 million yeah. and make the same movie but with different people in it. But uh, they did that with Back to the Future. <laughs> and also again to bring it back to green lantern you kept dumping money into that you dumped more money into that than you cared to say and you dumped a bunch of money into like batman v superman and things that ended up failing anyway so clearly you're just doing what you do best honestly at this point well furthermore like we have templates for movies that the studio didn't believe in but just pumped money into anyway so it would be passable and then mm-hmm. they made no money anyway and we know how that worked out like tron the Lone Ranger, John Carter of Mars, mm-hmm. were all movies that critically were, oh, I don't know about critically, but like commercially did not succeed yeah. in the box office, but were also but also had inflated budgets yep. because of the nature of the company that was previously not owners of Star Wars or Marvel at the time, mm-hmm. and just desperately trying to capture some male demographic that just they, they couldn't capture with those franchises. Like we know what happens when you spend $200 million in a movie and then give it another $200 million to try and make it viable. You'd lose $400 million. Yeah. Uh, a Carter says, thanks for clearing up the confusion with some straight, honest talk. We're trying, man. I don't want to like, you know, pollute the conversation with fakeness, but I also, Lord you know, I don't, there's enough of that. I, I do admit like, I'm not an expert on this subject and I can't like, you know, speculate it, but I, but I will always say what I know and what I don't know. And we, um, and we had graphs and stuff. We to had show graphs, too. yeah. Starro Pulsaro, do you think the death of the CW DC universe was a prelude to what's happening at HBO Max? Absolutely. I, I think that the killing of CW was another one of those things that like is a bottom line like item sheet. CW, according to sources that uh, you could Google, uh, never turn a profit. Yeah, it was it was always losing money, which I'm like, really? I mean, only in Hollywood can you keep losing money, but keep working at it. But have a goddamn station that you have going for 30 years. It, it also probably helped, too, where it's like, you know, what? the CW universe had already basically run its course. It was basically already done by the time they chose to kill it. So, again, I think they left it in a fairly good place. Flash season nine will be the end. And with it, that will be the end of the whole Arrowverse. I imagine Stargirl probably won't be coming back for a season four, which is a shame because I really like that one. That was a solid show that had a lot going on in it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I honestly, if I were in charge and I found out that the CW channel wasn't making any money and hasn't for 30 years, I would close it. Mm. Like that would just be a a first decision for me, which just be that's the end of it. Moving on, moving on. Um, But yeah, I think it was, I think it was certainly writing on the wall. Like we, we should have seen that coming. Does that uh, terrible Gotham Knights show, is that going to come out now, or have they decided to kill that as well? I don't know. It's a Batman property, so maybe. Batman uh, adjacent. Derpiest to Derps, having read up on Zaslav, Rowling is 100% going to be back and front and center in the Harry Potter sphere. Yeah, yeah, I've read some of his quotes, too. They're not great. Also, hey, total tinfoil hat theory time. This is, yeah, yeah, again, yeah. this is... This again, is, all this, conjecture, not, this, not confirmed. This is conjecture. Make of it whatever you want. Some people are theorizing that what this guy really wanted was nothing to do with DC, nothing to do with any of the brands he talks about, 
What he really wanted was CNN. Really? Yes, that's Ooh. the tough. Because here's the thing. Uh, in 2017, uh, he was actually a president over at CNN. Hmm. And then maybe this is some big, long con succession style <laughs> plot to get control of CNN to, you know, meld it to what he wants it to be. I, I mean, like, I don't know the man and I've never looked up his like his record. Mm. Uh, but damn, if that's the case, I mean, like, there are a couple of theories that going around here. I mean, the fact that there's even a there's even a graph of other things suggests at least he's got some kind of game plan it's, it's funny too i mentioned succession which is itself an hbo show yeah. but has not been mentioned at all in any of this even though it's like one of their highest rated highest reviewed shows here's the thing about succession i don't think joe and jane popcorn watch succession i think tv nerds like me watch succession after the fact and go like oh brian cox is so good right <laughs> yeah uh Pop culture guy, 3000, this merger is the death knell for animation. They already got rid of Infinity Train on Europe's uh, version of Max. So this Ooh, can be yes. the end of Young Justice. Almost certainly. Uh, and That's a bummer. That is a bummer. Uh, this guy, 9947. So this is current. So, so is the currently filming Blue Beetle movie canceled or are they going to let it finish? That's a great question. They I've have not said anything, though. The director worries the shit out of me because they've been going around liking tweets saying, like, don't cancel this. Please let this one come out. That says everything. The fact that, like, directors go on social media and, like, speak through their act. Like, that's the new language of the entertainment industry. So yes. if that director is liking things like, please don't cancel this movie, then the director has no idea. Mm -hmm. There has been no discussion about yeah. it. They're as scared and as the rest of us. <laughs> I'll I'll bet if I if if again if it were me and I was just sudden if I quantum leaped into him and I was just like having to keep keep up appearances, I would halt production on Blue Beetle. Mm -hmm. Like I wouldn't cancel it, but I would like I would halt production. But if production were halted, there would be an announcement because yes, we've heard all the time. We we know when there's a reshoot on a Marvel movie. We yep. know all the time. when a when when a production has been canceled or halted indefinitely. Like. We've seen that before. It's not happened yet. So I feel like Blue Beetle is probably still proceeding as usual. But I would be concerned. Yeah, man, that, that. that Blue Beetle suit looks so good. I know. <laughs> it's going to be so sad. It's, it, it, it would be really sad if it's another one that is like half done or 20 or 90 percent done. And, and they like, seem mm. so excited in every interview when they talked about it. They were so gung-ho about you know you know what we should have known you know what should have been the first sign that this was going to be trouble and this is where we were heading yeah. comic-con was like what last week two weeks ago yep. they only showed two things they showed two things and they were films movies lean in properties for male dominated demographics mm -hmm. yeah no shazam 2 mm -hmm. and black adam yep so and by they the way, part of their same family like it but but also and and they avoided every conversation about henry cavill sure and, did. And, and superman or any other process and, and, and like nothing else even had a booth so there was like very little dc presence at comic-con even i was too. there yeah there was you were no there. booth it was it was vacant when oh. it came to dc see yeah. that that should have been the dead giveaway right there that shit yeah. was coming down mm -hmm. yeah uh, Tevia says, uh, what about DC animated movies like Super Sons? I would be concerned if not uh, le uh, mourning their loss. I don't I don't know if they're considering those. Like, I mean, I, I think I that one has a release date, so I think that one might be fine. But once those are done, again, I don't know what money the DC animated movies make. I've always liked them. I've always thought they were fun, but I've always yeah. wondered what the audience was for them. Oh, yeah. No, and I, I, I feel like when it comes to an animated movie that can come out on their streaming services yeah. or on a Blu-ray, that's something that's like, Oh yeah, just put that out. It's like it's a, Scoob it, is a movie. Scoob was yes. a, was a CG movie that cost like a hundred million dollars, something like that. Uh, the, the super sons movie did not cost that. No. So uh, apparently something where they, they, not, they can't, they can't write it off. It doesn't, no. it doesn't, it doesn't make sense. No, no, it doesn't. Uh, apparently that Scoob uh, movie was supposed to come out and the results were supposed to be like a Halloween prequel thing as well that was going to go directly to the app. And of course, because they killed that movie, they killed the special that, too. And man, yeah. so sad to see how they treat animation, especially after three years of a pandemic when animation was holding up the streaming services because it was the only thing that could actually come out because you didn't need actors in the same room. Yeah, I know. 
Uh, mm. Will D. Goal says, uh, can't believe that Warners did a fantastic four with Batgirl. <laughs> this is why when corporate gets involved, the fans are screwed. I mean, it's all corporate, man. Like, yeah. it, it is true that, like, when they have corporate intentions, we get screwed. But, like, also... They're all corporate comics and corporate movies and corporate cars. Like cartoons. this is just a very blatant example of business trumping art. Yes, uh, Michael Loco. Uh, I had a pitch to have James Gunn's Suicide Squad sequel be an extraction, or an, a, a, yeah, an extraction. When they ask who, the reveal is that Deathstroke has turned Titan's Tower into a huge trap to lure Batfleck out and kill him. What do you say? Uh, I mean, like, yeah, you could do that, but like again, based on what their plan is, uh, they they would never do it because that's all part of a universe they're going to throw away. Yeah, it sure sounds like they're starting over and maybe throwing babies out with bathwater. But by the way, if you like the idea of like Titans Tower being a death trap and Deathstroke fighting the Titans, you might enjoy Dark Crisis over at DC Comics. Go check it out. It's a really fun series and it has exactly what you're looking for. I haven't read the new issue yet because I was reviewing Harley, but I'll be sure to get to it. Yeah, uh, Mongo's the artist, to be fair. Uh, heard Batgirl would lose money if released at all. Also heard HBO Max is separate from HBO and that these streamlines save $3 billion. To be fair, you don't know that for a fact, and it's not necessarily true. And uh, also, we only know that the Batgirl cost $90 million and it was being released on a streaming it service. It was already so going to streaming, so like, well, already, what you It was meant to be streaming, so they at least had in the budget the concept of recouping loss from that. Because honestly... I don't know how movies made for streaming make money. Likewise. Because if you make a movie for a budget, you put it out in theaters, the theaters make the money from the mm -hmm. audience, and then that money goes to the studio that goes into their coffers until they reach profit. When it comes to a streaming service that already exists, it has a baseline of audience members if the movie you made for this amount of money goes to streaming, I guess the hope is you'll get more subscribers for that streaming service. I get it's like replays is like you, but there's no ads. But so there's like, no ads. So like what? Yeah, I, I don't understand it necessarily, but I do know that Batgirl would not have lost money in the traditional sense. It's just that they needed it to pad their bottom line if that uh, was even why if that was even why which we will never know what well, we will until we you know when when someone tweets something but like yeah, when someone uh, inevitably breaks rank and it's like okay you want to hear the real story let me tell you exactly but like saving three billion dollars sounds like a made-up number to me uh he also says also heard the blue beetle got promoted to cinemas maybe maybe except for the fact that they have said out loud that they don't believe in mm -hmm. mid-budget movies that they so are even planning was the case that probably is going to change now <laughs> yeah they're planning on making the dc movies full-blown cinematic experiences that are in the hundreds of millions of only triple a characters only triple a characters and only to be like big like tentpole cinematic experiences mm -hmm. and that's where we get to dc so dc uh their approach is we're really going to mine Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman. Those are the three big print, like big brands. Yep. We're not going to be making mid budget, mid tier stuff like that. That's mm. not the approach. It's just big experiences. And we're in this, mo we're in this business to make movies. All big, all the time, all big, all the time. There's no room for the mid budget. There's no room for the TV show. There's no room for any of that. Cause we need to make a splash. And so mm. the approach is reboot. Yeah. It's, now, it's really I, the only way you can go. I haven't seen them say reboot, but no, they, they are saying that. that they are that they, that it's going to re that, that like they have a ten year plan, and it certainly doesn't involve Zack Snyder or no. and and if they're canceling Batgirl, then it's not going to contribute to. There's another the connection that, that yeah we're going to be cutting off. Yeah, now Peacemaker season two, notwithstanding, it could be that like maybe. You know, if I were them, I'd shunt the Snyderverse, the DCU to, to HBO Max. Anything that needs to be mm. in that universe is over there. All the movies are different. Um, but I also get the feeling Gunn is in an interesting case, too, because he's a guy who, of course, has been screwed over by studio politics once before. Maybe he has a thing in his contract that says, if I make this, you have to release it and you can't fuck with me. Right. Or you have to pay me like some outrageous amount of money that you're never going to do. So you might as well just leave me alone and let me and John Cena do our thing. Honestly, I could see James Gunn also feeling pretty strong because he's probably in the running to be the Kevin Feige. He's talking. got a hand. He's got big hand in this situation. Like, yeah, because weren't the Peacemaker numbers like something insane? Like it was the best streaming DC yeah. thing ever. One of the best streaming shows ever for the network and for exactly. HBO Max. 
And wh- wh- while uh, they don't necessarily regard HBO Max because they didn't make it themselves, mm. they have to acknowledge they have it. It does make and cost money and has to perform in some way. And again, Peacemaker probably wasn't all that expensive because, again, Gunn is a master of doing it on time and under budget because he used to make trauma movies. Exactly. That's true. That's true. And uh, so, yeah, I could see Peacemaker kind of being the lone holdout. But again, you're looking at things like Aquaman 2, which is having, uh, you know, Snyder, uh, well, from the Snyderverse, has Ben Affleck coming back. You know, there's the confusion of uh, of Michael Keaton and the approach there. <laughs> is Amber Heard in the movie or not in the movie now? <laughs> probably not. I probably would feel not. like, if she is, it'll be like the back of her head and then some yeah. new actor will be replacing her. But again, all conjecture. I don't know if that's true or not. But um, yeah, man. So what else do we know about this approach to DC, the movie arm? Because by the way, I've heard some interesting things. Let's let, you know what? Let me talk about some speculation. Really quick sure. Because I'd heard some talk and I think that's we took we had that same conversation with AT&T acquired Warner Brothers, which is. Mm-hmm. What will this become of DC comic books? Yes, as is always the theory, because if they're throwing babies out with bath waters, if they're cutting, you know, the fat, you know, right. if they're cutting the, the belt, fat, they need to they need to save money. They need to get rid of some some industries. I, am, I remember uh, HBO uh, or no, at and needed to recoup like trillions of dollars in yes, losses to make so, up for like the last administration. Yeah, and, and we knew that DC couldn't be on the chopping block because it ain't worth billions of dollars, much less trillions of dollars so it wouldn't yes. cost it wouldn't pay to get rid of it the sad it would, truth about comic books is no one has gotten rich publishing comic books in about a decade no exactly. even longer than that 20, more 20 25 years like, yeah. yeah like rob liefeld's the last one you know like, it, it, there, nobody has gotten rich making comics uh, i mean but, kirkman but that's like a whole well, other kirkman, thing yeah that's a, yeah no, no one has gotten rich publishing superhero comics in the Bingo. last two decades if you sell to netflix or to amazon or to some streaming service mm-hmm. you're good if you're a james tyne and you can become a millionaire overnight exactly so uh no i don't i don't think that dc but like i didn't think dc was on the chopping block back when at&t acquired it in this case I don't know because they I, seem much more unpredictable. They make they make rea- trashy reality TV shows. They clearly have no concept of art or quality. Right. Now I will say that I don't think they would be willing to get rid of DC Comics because it's an of IP their fran- it, They own their franchises. To get rid of DC Comics means that they would be that they would be letting someone else, a competitor dictate their stories and that would hurt their multimedia. Stories in their line. Exactly. It would hurt them to not have control over that 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 farm. So I think DC Comics is safe in as much as it's not going anywhere. Or but, it's not going to another owner. Yeah. That doesn't mean I don't think that like this company wouldn't close DC Comics because it's not making enough money. We don't publish books anymore. It's all digital now. Right. I, I I could see them closing DC Universe Infinite and being like digital con- what what no like I I don't I don't know but I do know that it's so unpredictable I don't trust them to do the right thing yeah. or the smart thing with DC Comics but they shelled the movie with the word bat in the title which means they they're shelled, capable of anything they threw a Batman movie that has Batman in it away to save ninety million dollars in tax credits. Mm-hmm. So I, I, but I don't think that they're going to sell DC comics that, that is established. Maybe not um, even chop it up for film rights like Marvel did in the nineties. Yeah. Now I heard an interesting theory, which stated that according to like accountants and tax law, this is the kind of pump and dump tactic you would see in a company that's interested in selling off their assets. Mm, corporate maybe, rating. They haven't had yeah. a good corporate raid in a long time. Like this is the kind of like, cause by the way, according to like all these graphs, like again, I should point out nothing has been said. Like they, the, the DC plan just to dump, jump into that really quick. 10 year plan. We need a Feige and we like, don't have it focus, yet. <laughs> and we're going to focus on like, Tent pole, major in, in theater cinematic experiences. That's been the plan. It's not for the last three administrations. Exactly. It's not economically like different from anything else they've approached, except that it has no Feige, no plan, and no foundation. No slate, no nothing. It's just no words. Nothing. Just words. It's just empty words. So, like, their approach to DC comics, like, they didn't set DC movies, they didn't even say that 
uh, th- that it's going to be a reboot. Yeah, no. Like Nothing they haven't said, even said reboot, restart, reset. Because re- they probably launch. don't even know yet. They have no plan. And there's a theory, and again, it's all rampant speculation, but there is a theory out there that there is there is no plan because they're not planning on doing that. Yeah, they're but, not going to keep any of it for that long. Yeah, that like yeah, no, we we're Discovery. We do we make very good money on diners, drive-ins, and dives, and friends re re uh, runs, and it Harry costs Potter. very little and is endlessly replayable. Exactly, and maybe this guy is a psycho and wants to own CNN and mold it to his will. Maybe he's a he he's he's successfully done that. And if they're looking to save money by shelving movies for like that are cost hundreds of millions of dollars, uh, maybe I'll just sell DC wholesale to apple or amazon yeah i'm sure they'd love it honestly they would and they know what to do because they're both entertainment companies that know how to like handle their brands it could be that like maybe that move of like shelving back row indefinitely of like killing these movies and 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 basically it's diminishing their stock which they did do Oh, yes, it dropped 15 to 16 points in two days, which is amazing. You know, two days ago, no one knew who David Zaslov was if you didn't follow reality shows. Then suddenly, everyone knows his name, and everyone is mad, and stock go down. Yeah, so I, I could see that being a, a a corporate rating strategy of, like, no, we deliberately devalued the company, which put us in this position of, like, more acquisitions and as a result, we're going to then sell off different brands, which, by the way, would look good. Like if they yes. were to be like, we're selling this, we're doing we're making good decisions, like we're making smart moves here. I could see them doing that again. Make make a bunch of harebrained cockamamie decisions. Mm-hmm. Don't yeah. d- don't answer any questions. Let everyone lead their own glass half empty worst case scenario ideas. Yep. Let that ruminate for a bit. Let the stock tank and then, yes, yeah, sell it all off in pieces. That's right. That's right. So God damn. That's that's a theory that I've heard that I'm like, uh, it makes sense. I've seen it. Like I've it's, seen it done and it, and would that be the worst thing? I don't know. Yeah, I don't it, know either. There I, it's almost the idea like the devil you know is better than the devil you don't know where like right, we, we were don't all don't know who the devil is anymore because the no. devil has sold hell three times. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like we were so distrustful of AT and T. It's like, oh, they're a phone company. Oh, yeah. Five five G. Did they call it that hey. just because they're a cell phone company? Yes, they I don't did. know. Man. And then the second that was done, it's like, oh, Discovery's here. It's like, uh, okay, I kind of miss AT and T. Can AT and T come back? Well, I don't even know because well, AT&T had no plan and no design. At least they were talking to people at DC Comics, but I, I don't know what this is. Uh, and I, I don't know what Apple or Amazon would do with the DC brand. Honestly, like if I mean, Amazon owning it, that's a whole other show. But like Amazon owning DC, they'd be like, cool. OK, we'll take HBO Max or whatever. And we'll take all those shows. Mm. They're all going to Prime. Everything's going to Prime. Prime becomes a it's, great value. It's just all Prime. Like titans doom patrol every cartoon every movie all of it just go oh, crime baby <laughs> yeah hell amazon already owns comiXology i know which seems like a real like slam dunk Conflict for them of interest yeah so it's, it's like yeah no oh well we, now comiXology is a dc company yeah that's officially like okay one company has too much power now that is dangerous monopoly shit yeah but it doesn't make enough money for it to be considered a monopoly yeah. now it, it it could legally be considered a monopoly but i will tell you like ladies and gentlemen Everybody always wants to throw away the word monopoly when it comes to like Disney owning DC or, Mm. you know, one company owning all the superheroes. And the fact is it doesn't make enough money in the comic book world for any judge to sit and hear it. Yeah. The what is it? The trust commissioner or whatever it is. We're probably like, well, well, what is this? What do we even what do we even how much money are we talking about? Well, your your honor, the comic book industry makes one billion dollars a year. The whole industry and what part of you Uh, we represent like 45 percent. Get the fuck out of my Yeah, get out of my... I'm here for telecom giants and, like, friggin' people who make insulin. Yeah, exactly. And even Uh, then, they fuck that up, too. (laughs) That's true. Mike Manhattan, if they cancel Primal, I'm going to be... It's going to be war. Oh, yeah. Uh, The Derpiest says, I'm going to be sad when the new set of DC animated movies gets canned. Man of Tomorrow was fantastic. Long Halloween Just Society were decent. They were. They were decent. I kind of dug them. They look better, and they sound better, and I like that they're being more standalone now. Yeah, no, I agree. But who just, knows did, what that means? Did you see that Green Lantern one? No, not yet. It was pretty good. It's funny, you know, they, they bring all these other great characters in, and it's like, wasn't this supposed to be about Jon Stewart? Jon Stewart kind of gets lost in his own movie. Ah, damn. 
Starro Pulsaro, if DC is going the way of MCU with their 10 year plan, do you think that HBO Max will go the way of Netflix and make K and make dramas and original anime? Maybe. I I don't think we're going to live in a world where any of the things you just described are going to happen. Yeah. So, I, I mean, like, if they were to do that, this would be the approach because, of course, HBO Max, according to the, uh, the Zaslav, uh, is a place where they're going to make scripted content for, mm-hmm. like, a male-dominated audience. So, like, yeah, that's where, like, scripted dramas with, like, you know, with, with, with mature themes would go. But we're also so, yeah. cutting 70% of our scripted content, so you're going to be getting less of it. <laughs> That's true. Uh, he also says, isn't it a little weird that the mainstay of whoever this new DC universe is going to be Shazam? Hmm. I mean, for now, I think it's more because those were made first, and yeah. they are not like so tonally objectionable that they're not willing to shelve them. You know, Flash got delayed. It just keeps getting pushed back. But yes. Shazam 2, that's right on schedule. Whatever. Yeah. It's like, who could argue with that? It's fine. And, and I like Shazam, and that I like new Shazam one too, looks yeah. pretty good. It looks cute, yeah. Yeah, uh, which is all Clark. I want from Shazam. Just be cute, be fun, be something I can see at Christmas be time. Elf. Exactly. Uh, is it possible that they could dump DC to someone that they don't view as a competitor, shut down DC, and license the characters to IDW just for comics? Yeah, that's possible. They could always do that because they own those characters. They own that thing. But why would they? Like, why would they bother? Like, that would that would ex- that, that has an expectation of anyone here knowing what the comic book industry is, knowing what that does, what worth. and what it's worth. So rather, if I have people who run that shit and do that, and they know what they're doing, let them do the thing. Like, just assume, let them... assume that they'll do the laziest option. Mm-hmm. Yes. Uh, as long as... The thing is, you'd have to... Sus- you, you just look at what the person who's in charge values the most. Mm. Um, I don't think they value comics, so I don't think they're going no. to. So I wouldn't worry about that. Uh, uh, Silver Cricket says, just got here, but uh, I bet someone took whatever money would be used for distribution and ran with it for Batgirl. Mm, mm. I mean, yeah, right, because like that's the thing. Well, the thing was, the movie was going to be coming out on streaming. Yeah. So, I don't know if the distribution uh, promotional budget... Apparently, there was a promotion budget, because I was seeing like signs and stuff on the street and everything like, oh, you know, Batgirl was filmed here, Batgirl was coming, so apparently there was some promotion money around. Okay, that makes sense. But that's gone. Oh yeah. Uh, oh yeah. Someone pocketed the shit out of that. <laughs> oh totally. Uh, well, n- n- you know, in the best of circumstances, maybe they reallocated it to the budgets for their upcoming ten-year DC plan. Mm. Uh, Pop culture guy says Zaslav isn't going to sell DC to Amazon. They're going to sell Cartoon Network because he doesn't like or appreciate animation. No, he does not. Oh, that would be crazy if Amazon. Yeah. Got freaking Cartoon Network. Oh man. That's that's not a bad idea. <laughs> I mean, Amazon, like, love him or hate him, and there's lots of reasons to hate him. They oh, made yeah. A, they made a really good freaking Critical Role cartoon. Invincible is good. The, yeah. That boy series of animated shorts was good. Yeah, they seem to have at least some eye towards animation. Yeah. Um, Apple, uh, Apple TV could use something, too, though. I mean, like, I could see either one. But Amazon would actually be like, yeah, we could do something with that are you kidding me <laughs> it's funny too when zaslav was talking about shows he liked he apparently mentioned ted lasso and i'm like dude ted lasso is going to be done soon they admitted like yeah we're going to be done after this yeah yeah i'm not going to try I, and keep this going no good because i like ted lasso but i also don't want it to like live forever likewise uh limp across the finish line but yeah so uh their plan for dc uh, according to their bottom line is no plan it's just a bunch of bullshit it's a bunch of marketing buzzwords like but 10-year plan need a feige you know we've heard this before what are the odds too? you think you know on the comic end are we gonna see another bloodletting like we did with at&t where they fired everyone at the top and brought in their own people is that gonna be happening again i think that only will would happen if they cared like mm. if they if they valued it and you know with at&t i don't know like i don't know why the dc bloodbath even happened honestly yeah. because they fired people who were crucial and integral to the working mechanism that was dc comics like i'm not talking about the deal by the way i'm talking about members of the of the staff who had been there for a decade yeah. or more who like just understood how to sell comics and what comics mm-hmm. to sell and they lost them and replaced them with no one mm-hmm. 
or someone who didn't understand the industry and still doesn't someone get from it. a completely other industry who they uplifted right which like that's the kind of thing that i would expect a company like at&t to do because they're like look we're making changes we're pulling levers this is a thing where like they're an entertainment company they know what sells but they also mm. as you can tell they have their priorities and their values zaslav values cinema Mm. and movie theater experiences and so i would expect that like that's the plan and like i would expect them to look at the comic book arm and just go it's easier if we own it just let them do whatever now i don't see them firing anyone else and replacing with their own people unless like dc comic sales go down or there's like a weird like undercurrent of bullshit because i know that um one of the women that they brought in who was like the president or something at the time when uh black label was established mm -hmm. she was pissed about the batwang bit damned incident yes like the reason why black label was gutted and why it didn't become a huge deal and should have been because like all you had to do when batman damn took place was send Jim Lee to mm -hmm. Seth Meyers, Colbert, all the night and shows, like, and just say like, "That's right. If you for only like six bucks, you can see Batman's dick." But also, let's talk about comics. Let's talk about like story. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about Brian Azarel. Let's talk about Lee Rejo's fucking amazing art. Look at this. Look at that. We didn't talk about. You know what's funny? Everyone's focusing on this dick. We didn't talk about. There's actually a contract for Brian, Brian Azarello that you can't change any of his art because he was expecting the crucifixion sequence to be mm. the most egregious thing. And so we got to show that and like, you know, and, and turn it into a marketing strategy. Yeah. But because the head of DC was like, oh, no, they recoiled in terror and DC Black Label basically got the knees cut out from Andre at the starting line. And I think hurt DC Comics irre irrevocably from that day forward. But but I feel like that was also a, a an embarrassment to upper management and the people who control DC mm. comics because of how it was perceived by their Harry Potter person. Yes. So it was a major I, hit to morale where it's like, Oh, so the company didn't go to bat for us when we needed it. Cool. Well, that and like the upper management's like, what are you doing down there? Why mm. is our lunchbox characters dick out? <laughs> like, and, and rather than going like, listen, we created this whole new adult oriented arm. It's not like what you think is that helicopter dicking throughout the whole <laughs> series. Like it's a whole thing, but like rather than that happening, they just went, Oh, oh I'm so sorry. And so it just like, so if that happened again, I would see Discovery going like carve out everyone at the upper levels and replace mm -hmm. them with my own people because at least I know how to sell cartoon shit to adult to, to adult men. Yeah. You know, I could see that happening. But I don't see it happening unless DC like publicly shits the bed tomorrow. Yeah. Uh Silvery Cricket says Cartoon Network executives are pushing for live action shows. Again. Reminder, uh, the last time they tried live action shows, the ratings were so bad, it got the sitting CEO thrown out. I smell pump and dump. Could be. I mean, be. if your idea for Cartoon Network is we need less cartoons. S similarly, we're, we're a reality TV show company. We bought home box office, and our idea is less box office. We're going to take away movies. We're going to shell projects. Right. What? That's not a plan. Uh Starro Pulsaro, uh, Dan DiDio comes back to DC Comics with this <laughs> merger. Right? No. That's never going to happen. <laughs> Guess who's out. home? Yeah, he will not be brought. Unless also, he was like, he, if he, he would be smart if he was like, I worked. Like, so I got fired. I went over to Dis Discovery Plus, and I worked for them, and I helped them develop some of And then, like, I just get back in. Like, I could see that. That's a that's a wrestling storyline. <laughs> it's what right, that exactly. is. Yeah. Dan Dio doing a run-in with a chair. Oh, it's Dan Dio. He's Dan back. Dio. <laughs> Guess who's back? Yeah. Uh, Scarlet Hottie listening to Elseworlds Exchange by the pool today. Life is oh, good. Nice. nice. That is that is a good place to be, my friend. Uh, young Goku over 9,000. Bruh, Ezra needs some help or to be fired. They mm. are lost in the celeb sauce, and it's just weird. Uh, it's just weird that they are holding up DC. As much as DC is itself. Man, I don't get it. I mean, to help them, they got to find them first. And they're like on the run. And everyone's just acting like this isn't a big deal. Has anyone at the studio even talked to them? If the right. police can't find them. Yeah, I don't. I don't know. I mean, I feel like they do. I feel like they have. But I don't know, man. It's it's. It's a it's a goddamn mess uh, to be King a fly Slavial. on the wall for that conversation. Hey, Ezra, buddy, you know, where are you at right now? I, you know, just driving across Hawaii really fast with a loaded gun and, you know, body armor for no reason. Right. Like, uh, get get out of here. Uh, Kingsport Cal. Sal, you talked about X-Men Psylocke bathroom scenes the other day. I had that page plastered on my wall. Elsa traced it and gave it to a girl. Huh? That wouldn't have been my first choice, but nicely <laughs> done, my friend. 
uh, uh, Michael Loco, when it comes to DC, especially now after San Diego Comic Con, I think of a quote I heard in Avengers Age of Ultron, which is ironic. You want to protect the world, but you don't want it to change. Mm. I mean, do they? Do they want it to change? Like, do do they want to protect? I mean, like, I don't see them wanting to do. Black Adam and Shazam are at least things that like work. They're like, yeah. we get it. Like, we we get that these are done. Mm-hmm. That these can make money, and they're and, and they're inevitable. One of them is one of them literally is starring the largest actor in the world. Yes, and the other one should have him in it. Yeah. Right, like it's it's Black Adam, who's a Shazam character. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, you got to release those two movies. But I don't think they're. I don't think they have a plan outside of that. No, like, they don't. And that? also, too, as big as The Rock is, I'm sure that's a problem too. They're like, we would love to commit The Rock to more movies. We'd love to have him be the villain in Shazam three. But but he might be running for president next year or <laughs> something. We don't fucking know. He's unpredictable. Right, or, and or, because he writes his own check, he can do whatever the hell he wants. Exactly. Or like Paramount uh, just wants him for more Fast and the Furious movies, and he knows those will make more money. Which is more than likely to happen. They're like, oh, they called me back for more Fast and the Furious, and y'all all get to produce and direct and cast all my friends and shit exactly uh ray far says uh, hey guys was gonna w- miss the show because i planned to be shopping today but at my local comic shop but i forgot my wallet i hope Aww. the Blue movie is still happening uh we yeah all. man we'll see but uh, uh hopefully you get your wallet get back to the comic book store thanks for being here uh good to see you. i saw you at the beginning of the show uh silvery cricket uh, last i heard about ezra they were holding a woman and their baby hostage like in kansas and she developed yeah. stockholm syndrome yeah there's yeah. a lot of crazy stuff coming out about that there's going to be a great documentary made about that one day and hey let, 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 let me pitch a title for you here uh we have to talk about ezra because you know it's a reference that we have to talk about kevin which was his big break or their breakout role wherein yeah. they played uh, a psychopath who was you know charming <laughs> to some but terrifying to others oh my god uh, I mean, yeah, I like somebody saying like, why, why would WB, sh- why should WB play, play like therapists, just fire them? Like, yeah, no, like th- their job is to make movies. If you're fucking up the movie, get the hell out of here. Again, how uh, are you going to promote this for summer next year? Again, I don't think Ezra Miller is going to be able to make press conferences because every press conference is going to be like, hey, so why did you choke that lady? Why, right. why Remember did you, you do all them, those that woman? Like, yeah, can you imagine hi- like them on like, I don't know Colbert or mm-hmm. uh, or or, or uh, Jimmy Hot Fallon. Ones. Like, I mean, Fallon is more than happy to like coddle them and just mm-hmm. like give them softball questions. But like, mm-hmm. but but you also can't trust Ezra not to like lose it. Yeah. <laughs> no, the Flash movie is a huge quagmire, and I'll bet it's like the topic of most discussions. If indeed they do genuinely want to keep making this movie, like, yeah. or if they if they genuinely have a plan to make comic book movies. Like, if it's not all just some elaborate scheme to control a news, like a 24 hour news cycle yeah. organization and, and, and dump a like billion dollar, you know, property. I a, a lot know. of these, a lot of these DC projects too seem to try and be launching pads for other things. Like the Black Adam movie is clearly also meant to launch the Justice Society, which looks great and is yeah. a cool cast. And I would love to watch a Justice Society movie. I don't know if I'll get it. Likewise, Flashpoint. Started as a Flash movie, started as a retcon thing, but it's also where we're supposed to reintroduce Keaton as Batman for other things yep. that we're not going to do now because it kept getting delayed. And there was going to be a new Supergirl who was maybe supposed to get a movie, but also probably not now because the direct, uh, you know, the guy in charge now clearly doesn't respect women and doesn't think that you know they're worthy of triple A stuff. Also, hey, wasn't there two black uh, Superman movies also in production? Oh, those got canceled. I saw that also was canceled. You know, oh, those, those are also happen. gone. God, yeah. I was writing a really, really in-depth, you know, essay on the history of Black Superman to try and, you know, coincide. That's a, ah, fuck it. I'm going to put it out anyway. <laughs> Why not? I'll, I'll put it out for Black History Month. For February, I'll, I'll drop that one. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, Starro Posaro of the Flash movie goes gangbusters. Do you think WB will keep Ezra Miller? No. I mean, if they're ha- smart, I would say no. Haven't they already officially said no? We're not working with this person again, but we have to ride or die on this one because we have too much tied up in it. Yeah, exactly. D- don't so, worry, I'm sure they will go and make more Fantastic Beasts. <laughs> yeah, that one franchise that like no one is asking for. No, 
but apparently they're in bed with Rowling too for at least 10 more years and they got two more movies they're supposed to put out, but they're probably going to combine them into one just so they can be done. I I would like to be done at this point. I mean, come on. Please let me off this ride. (laughs) Anyway, we want to thank you so much for hanging out with us. If you have any opinions or thoughts, try to keep it civil in the comments down below this video. And of course, you want to help us out, click the link uh, or click the like button. It helps us out and subscribe to the channel for more things here on Comp Opera Turns. Of course, if you like more, Joel, you can go to YouTube.com slash cave joel yeah. and uh i just wanted to mention that if you dig us and you want to check out patreon.com slash comic pop a couple of new rewards a couple of new uh tiers and uh, you might enjoy what you find so go over there and we'll see you guys next time with another episode of the elseworlds exchange uh that's going to be happening in two weeks because uh we're a bi-weekly show now yeah. uh but uh so stay tuned for more and uh, thanks a lot for watching. Thank you especially to our Super Chatters for sponsoring today's Ooh, show mm. and making it happen because uh, you know, this way we don't have to worry about like, oh, no, the sponsor doesn't like it. Like, no, you're the sponsor. You yes. make sure that we stay on task. Uh, so thank you all so much, and we'll see you guys next time. I'm Sal. And I'm Joel. So long. <laughs>